Hi everybody. Um, I had someone ask on one of my other videos how I handle uh, having so many uh, threads with needles on them and not getting tangled up. Uh, as I mentioned, I can do up to 15 to 20 in rare cases. I usually keep it around a dozen, but uh, I have gone up higher. Um, the biggest thing is usually when I'm using that many needles, it's more spread out across a diagonal, so they're not all exactly in one area. Um, the other thing I do is, as you can see, I keep multiple magnets so that they're not all crowded onto one magnet as they are more likely to tangle. The stuff that's up higher in the diagonal, obviously I put the needles up on the higher magnets. The other ones, I put them on the lower magnets to help keep them from getting wrapped around each other. Uh, the threads that I am not currently using, I keep wrapped sort of taut around the magnet so that it's not interfering with the threads that I am currently stitching with because that's more likely to tangle. The biggest thing that helps me avoid tangles is that I start and end all my threads from the front so that I never have to turn my work over. If you are flipping it to the back, then obviously there is way more likelihood that you're going to get a tangle. So that helps a lot. I made a video about how I do that and I will put a link to it in the description box uh, so that you can check that out and uh, try it for yourself. The other thing is when I am pulling needles free, um, I make sure I don't pull them too fast. You have to be kind of gentle and sort of ease them out from among, from among the others. But uh, with practice, I found it's uh, not a problem. So I will stitch a little bit and sort of show you how I do that. I think I counted up, I have like 13 uh, live needles at the moment. So you can get an idea for it. So I always like to use a spare needle to help me separate the threads so that I can just grab the one that I want to use. And then I just sort of guide it out from the others like that. And you can see it comes out with the needle still on. And then I'm going to stitch a bit with this. Another thing is to make sure that your thread is of a sufficient length if you're going to keep it with the needle on. Uh, I find anything that is uh, six inches or shorter, I don't bother leaving it threaded because uh, generally the needle's going to come off when you try to pull it out and it's just not gonna work. So at that point, I just unthread it and I will re-thread it later when I get to it. Also, if I am stitching with a thread that gets parked out of the diagonal or, you know, fair ways down and I'm not going to be stitching with it for a while, I will often then unthread that and get back to it later. So it's just sort of a juggling act between those factors. that. So now I'm going to pull up the next thread, which is going to be this one. That was right next to where I parked. So again, separate it, just gently pull it out. So occasionally, if you cannot get them untangled, at that point, I will sort of slide the needles off and then just gently pull them apart. Sometimes I even have a wide tooth comb that I can use to help me uh, separate the threads if they get tangled, but generally that doesn't happen. I know it looks like a mess, but uh, there is a method to it. Okay, so that one, there's nothing to park, so I'm going to end it. So then that means, of course, I've got one less uh, needle in play, so that makes it a little bit easier. So now I'm gonna go back to that first color that I picked up. And because I just sort of parked it, it's kind of on top of all the others. So that makes it even easier to pull it free. So I often do that if I have a choice between a color that's sort of just been put on the magnet versus one that was put on there a while ago, I'll take the one that was put on there latest. And then that also helps to avoid the tangles. use a spare needle, 
see if I can just very carefully pull that out. There, I can see which one it's attached to now. Just sort of pull it out. There we go. Also make sure you sort of hold the other threads taut so they don't get tangled with your working thread. Okay, this one I'm going to jump around a teeny bit. So I'm going to do this one here and this one in the corner. And then I'm going to sort of go back up. to my fingers. So I'm going to put that on the upper magnet because it's kind of higher up in the diagonal. And then it will be time to add another thread it looks like. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to actually go that color there. Another one here. So I kind of find uh, often I'll add new threads, but then I'm also ending off other threads so it doesn't get to be too many needles in play. Now, if you were doing like a max color from heaven and earth designs, then this might not work as well for you because that is a lot of threads then in each area. So this pattern I'm doing right now is 120 colors. So it's a fair amount, but still manageable. So again, that one, that one. And then the next stitches I'll be showing you that I am once again pulling out an already threaded one, one that already has a needle on it. So no magic trick to this, it's just a matter of practice and patience, really. those two and that one. So then I'm going to pull up this one here. So, oh. so again, take my spare needle to help me find that thread and then just ease it out from these other ones here. And there we go. Came out with it still on. And then carry on stitching with it and just continue on like that, just like I said, being patient, don't try to pull them out too fast as that will cause you issues. So I hope that that helps. Um, I hope that maybe this will help you stitch a little faster since you're not having to uh, re-thread as much. And uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, just uh, leave me a comment and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.